Today we're going to talk about sperm banking. Sperm banking, the true and only savings account. When an individual desires to preserve their fertility, they may consider the option of collecting a sample of their semen for future use. Situations like cancer or vasectomy at an early age could lead an individual to consider this as an alternative for future potential fertility. The process of storing a semen sample is called cryopreservation, and it basically means storing a sample frozen. Let's talk about the difference between semen and sperm. This can be a little bit confusing since uh, these terms are often used interchangeably. However, they are very different. Semen is the liquid that is ejaculated. The majority of this liquid, up to 95% of it, is produced by two glands, the seminal vesicles and the prostate. It contains enzymes and, and sugars that support and nourish the sperm. Sperm, on the other hand, are the male reproductive cells that contain genetic material. They represent 5% of the material that is ejaculated and they are produced in the testicles. A sperm is made up of three main parts, the head, the meat piece, and the tail. Under a microscope, they just look like very tiny tadpoles. But what is involved in collecting the sperm? Well, prior to collecting a sample, some testing to assess for the presence of sperm in the semen and for infectious diseases might be required. For many men, collecting sperm to freeze is a simple, non-invasive procedure. You may be asked to enter a private room to masturbate and collect your semen in a special container. In other cases, companies will provide the material you need to be able to collect the sample at home and submit it to the freezing facility. A usual semen sample will contain around 5 to 20 million sperm per cc and is able to be divided into several vials for storage. Often, since sperm production is affected by many factors, you may be asked to collect more than one sample. This obviously will help to improve your chances of being able to have a child later. But what if you can give a sample? Well, some men are unwilling or unable to collect a sample through masturbation, and for these, a special condom may be used to collect semen during intercourse. There are instances in which a man may have abnormal ejaculations. For example, the semen goes into the bladder or difficulties achieving an ejaculation. In those instances, there are certain additional interventions that would make it easier to retrieve the sperm. Let's talk about how the sperm is kept frozen. Well, once it is collected, the semen sample is mixed with some substances that protect it during the freezing process. These are liquids that help protect the sperm against damage. The sample is then frozen by a slow cooling method or a flash freezing method called vitrification, which is like making glass. Sperm needs to be stored at minus 300 Fahrenheit degrees, and therefore, it, it requires a special facility to keep the sample. So once stored, how long can the sperm be kept there? Well, normally sperm has certain lifespan depending on where it is located. After ejaculation, sperm can live outside of a man's body for about one or two hours. However, during intercourse, once inside a partner's uterus, the sperm can actually live for up to 72 hours. After a vasectomy, given that the semen provides nourishing substances, sperm can still be alive for weeks above the area that we cut during the procedure. Hence, the need of multiple ejaculations after, after the vasectomy and a post-vasectomy semen sample. So, when the sperm is frozen for banking, it can be stored indefinitely. Sperm that have been frozen for over 20 years has been documented to be used to create pregnancy. Now, how do you use that frozen sperm when you need to use it or you want or you want to use it? Well, there are three primary options for using frozen sperm. One is called intrauterine insemination or IUI. This requires that the semen sample gets thawed and prepared and inserted directly into the uterus. It's basically bypassing the vagina and the cervix, which is the lower part of the uterus. The procedure happens at the time of ovulation and often it is time using an ovulation medication. The other way to use this sample is using IVF or what we know as in vitro fertilization. In this, in this procedure, the eggs are retrieved from a patient's ovaries through a quick surgical procedure, and then they're fertilized. They're, they're put together with the sperm in the lab and then allowed to grow inside the uterus. And the other method is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, which is just a fancy expression uh, of a portion of the IVF technique in which a single sperm is actually put inside the egg. So we just make it easier for the uh, sperm to fertilize that egg. 
Well, these three processes are assisted reproductive procedures, which means they require consideration of the cost associated with it in an additional specialist. So these are the five things I want you to remember about sperm banking. First, semen is the entire material ejaculated by a male during orgasm. Second, sperm is part of the semen and contains the genetic material for a pregnancy. Third, storing sperm for future use is an alternative for some people. Storage of the semen can be done almost indefinitely. And five, consider the costs associated with the use of sperm in the future if you choose to do this alternative.